Okay, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. This video is a continuation in this series that investigates water hammer and pressure waves and fluid pipelines and analysis methods. In particular, in this video, we're going to be looking to see how the method of characteristics handles an incoming wave to a multi-pipe junction. In particular, we're going to be looking at uh, the magnitude of the transmitted wave and the reflective wave. I hope you find it useful. Okay, in a previous video, uh, we looked at the exact same situation where we had incoming wave to a multi-pipe junction, and we were able to calculate the uh, magnitude of the transmitted waves in the downstream pipes and the reflected wave uh, that travels back up the pipe uh, with the incident wave. And doing that, we used the Joukowsky relation, uh, which is an expression of conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. And uh, here it is for review and where we have the grouping uh, celerity over uh, acceleration of gravity in the pipe flow area is often referred to as the elastic factor. It accounts for the compressibility of the uh, liquid and as well as the elasticity of the uh, pipe. And uh, when we do that, the Joukowsky equation is the uh, change in head due to a change in flow is the change in flow times the elastic factor. Okay, so we went through the derivation and we found that the transmission factor is given by this equation where the transmission factor is equal to 2 over the elastic factor in pipe 1, pipe 1 being the pipe with the incident wave, and that is divided by the sum of i is equal 1 to n, where n is the number of pipes in the shown situation, n would be equal to 3, of 1 over the elastic factor. And then we work through an example. This is a two-pipe junction, which doesn't sound like a junction, but it is because in this example, the elastic factor in pipe 1 is 500, and the elastic factor in pipe 2 is 400. And so that will have an impact on the transmitted wave and the reflective wave uh, back up pipe 1. And using our previously determined calculations, we determined that the uh, transmission factor is 0 0.89. So this 100-foot uh, incoming wave or 100 meter incoming wave, I uh, haven't really specified units, uh, is going to come in, interact with this junction, and 89% of that is going to travel down through pipe 2. And the reflection factor is minus 0.11, and so there's going to be a minus 11 uh, wave traveling upstream back up pipe number 1. So we worked through the example. And we got that the uh, flow behind the wave changed from 0.5 to 0.7. And the head, as expected, changed from 150 plus 100 is equal to 250. And now the question is, what is the uh, head and flow uh, after the wave interactions? And we get the flow changed to 0 0.72. That's on each, in each pipe uh, surrounding the junction. And the head surrounding the junction in each pipe is uh, 239, uh, consistent with our transmission and uh, reflection factors. Now the question is, does the method of characteristics accomplish the same thing? And things get a little bit more complex. I uh, derived these equations from the method of characteristics in a separate video, so I'm going to be glossing over that. But big picture is that we solve for the head and flow at an unknown time level and junction, by solving these two sets of equations. One set of equations, the C plus equation, is valid along the C plus characteristics. The set of the C minus equations is valid along the C minus characteristics. We solve those together to find the head and flow at, in this case, node I, time level J plus one. We march through time in that manner. Okay, now it's a second order accurate method was derived, and I'm going to repeat that here. So these are the two sets of equations simplified. Uh, we've in accounted for the uh, friction factor and a resistance term, and again, we're using the elastic factor uh, to account for the uh, celerity, gravity, and, and the area of the pipe. All of that is good, but you'll notice that we are not accounting for changes in the resistance or the uh, elastic factor around this node. And uh, we want to be able to do that. So let's say we have in pipe I minus 1 to node I, call that pipe 1, and we have an elastic factor denoted as F1. And in pipe 2, we also have a resistance 1 in that pipe. In pipe 2, we have an uh, elastic factor denoted as F2 and a resistance R2. And so now we repeat our, repeat our uh, 
positive and minus characteristics equations with the uh, resistances and elastic factors noted. So we need to combine these equations uh, to solve for the head and flow at node I, time level J plus 1. It gets pretty complex. This is the uh, solution for the head at node I, time level J plus 1. You'll notice that it has the flow at node I, J plus 1, which is an unknown. But luckily, when we solve for uh, the flow at node I, time level J plus 1, everything is known. So this is doable. We solve for the flow first, and then we can substitute in and solve for the head. Now, clearly, it's going to be difficult, to, if impossible, to come up with a transmission factor with just these two equations and reflection factor. And it does get complex, but we are going to return to show that for a simple situation like the uh, same uh, example problem that we worked through before, uh, we will be able to do that. And so this is the example we worked through before, just repeating everything. And now we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to have to uh, define our nodes, I minus 1, I, and I plus 1. Again, pipe 1 is to the left of node I, pipe 2 is to the right of node I. And we are going to consider the case where the uh, frictional resistance is equal to zero. And why do we do that? Is because we are just interested in what is the impact that the uh, junction has on an incoming pressure wave. It turns out that, and we will explore this in another video, uh, the actual pipe friction will also uh, have an impact on the wave. It will attenuate the wave and even reflect portions of the wave. And uh, to keep our results clean, we are just going to have uh, completely uh, zero friction pipes. Okay, so this is the situation that we're looking at. Once again, we have an incoming wave, and we are looking to see what the reflective wave is going to be and the transmitted wave. And again, how do we do that? Well, we've got to solve the method of characteristics equations, and that gets kind of complex. To get enough equations, the unknowns, we actually have to look at three different time levels. Now... I'm just showing how you, you how it's done. I would not expect you to memorize this. That's of a very limited uh, usefulness. But other than really right now, this is an exercise is showing how complex the method of characteristics uh, can become. Is that I need to solve for the head in the flow at uh, node I minus one time level T. And so I'm going to be bringing the C minus characteristics from time level T minus delta T from node I to node I plus one. And then once again, I got to look at the C minus and the C plus uh, characteristics to get the information at node I time level T plus delta T. Uh, it can be done. Uh, thank goodness for Sage Math. And I am going to uh, skip the details. Uh, but when I do that, I do get a very similar looking uh, transmission factor. Up in the upper left hand corner is our original transmission factor uh, derived from. Uh, more exactly from the uh, Joukowsky equation and algebraically we derive a tr transmission factor as shown here and it turns out even though it looks a little bit different uh, we do get the exact same value I'm not going to go through uh, all the algebra on this and I'm just going to ask you to take my word for it that the uh, the reflection factor is indeed again uh, minus 0.11 as we had before so the conclusion is is yes the method of characteristics uh, obtains the exact same transmitted and reflective wave as we would get with a more exact solution uh, using the uh, Joukowsky equation. Now this is really not the easiest way to solve this problem. Uh, the easiest way to solve this or to demonstrate this is uh, to come up with a pipe going from a reservoir to a fixed resistance. You uh, specify zero resistance or friction for all of the pipes you nodalize and you set the resistance at the end of the pipe to obtain the desired flow. So the initial condition is going to be 0.5 flow rate and a head of 150 at each of these nodes. And then at time equals to zero is that you raise the uh, head from 150 to 250. This gives you the 150 uh, strength the wave traveling down this pipeline. And then you just use the normal method of characteristics uh, to calculate the resulting head and flows and when you do that you do get the exact uh, same answer so in fact if you are ever going to be doing these the numerical experiments uh, this is the way i recommend the algebra is, is much much simpler so in the end the conclusion is is that yes the method of characteristics obtains uh, the exact same uh, reflection and transmission factors 
as the exact uh, expression determined from the Joukowsky equation. Again, for all of these, we are ignoring any uh, minor loss coefficients at the actual pipe junction. And to demonstrate that in the method of characteristics, uh, we had to use uh, zero friction pipes. Uh, so this is, wraps up this uh, video, the, the continuation in this series. I uh, hope you found it useful and interesting. Uh, please like and subscribe. But more importantly, have a great day.